Salutations everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Fallen London. I am your host, Brainboy20, and where we had last left off, we had begun Poudreau's journey through the Untersea. We've acquired all our current objectives, I believe. Let me check, because sometimes this game likes to reset itself. Yes. Okay, we have the Admiralty stuff, Tomb Colonists of Vendabite, and we have a fair amount of cash, of which we will soon purchase a new ship and a new crew. And let us shove off to the deep sea. Now, part of the reason I'm going to be showing this stuff again, as you can see, is the map has reset from the last time, and resets at the beginning of every single adventure. As such, we're going to have to go through the glory of rediscovering all this. And I just realized that once again, the game has been so bloody kind to me, and has not saved me purchasing those supplies and the uh, engine temp uh, engine temperature fuel. So let's first get the purchases correct this time around. Fifteen fuel should be more than enough. Ten supplies about. Uh, no, we'll go with one more extra, and then purchase a cup. Like I think it was five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I think that was all that was necessary in order to do the second portion of the quest in Vendabite as well. I was remembering correctly, the second portion of the quest in Vendabite gives some very useful pieces of equipment. Anyway, time to head down south. We're going to do the normal route that we did last time, because certain islands are stagnant within the Z, and thus we will end up finding those locations multiple times. As long as it hasn't changed in unexpected ways. We also have the best cannon available. So hopefully we can one-shot this bastard. As expected. We have one more Auroral Megalops. It just needs to get into range before we can actually kill it. And we're going to butcher it for supplies because dissecting it does not give enough knowledge to be worthwhile. And due to the strength of this cannon, we should hopefully one-shot most of these areas. Now, for those who are coming into the Sunless Sea now instead of much earlier on, I might as well explain some of the mechanics. We have our speeds, but acceleration and deceleration have an actual mechanic here. Combat is based on this arcing range. You can only aim at someone within that range, and you can fire your weapon whenever it's green, but only fully charged shots will have a 100% chance of hitting every time, whereas partially charged ones have a very good chance of missing. And they deal combat based on ships to, to ships or monsters based on their combat rating. The crew rating is how much crew is required to use it. And we're at Mutton Island, so let's see what Quaker's Haven has for me. I don't feel if going to drinks to the cork and magpie are worthwhile. I can pick up a wretched mog, but how many supplies does it cost? Three. Not really that useful to me right now. Let's go grab a port a port at the fisherman, spending a single echo to make ten when we get back. And we'll visit the hilltops above town. There's not much wind on the undersea, but Mutton Island suffers eerie gusts and buffets from an inexplicable local fragment of weather, and the air on the hilltop sometimes carries interesting scents. Toasting the wind. You stand on the cliff top, looking over the little village. Smoke from the chimney of the cock and magpie drifts straight upwards. As you watch, the smoke tilts, the sudden wind thins it to a pencil smudge, then nothing. The wind screams unexpectedly, like a god cut in half. What a noise! It must be the caves around the island channeling the air. At least, that's the most comforting explanation. Below you, the locals each take nips from a shared flask and make a toast towards the mainland. The wind is uh, southerly. We're 44 fragments, that's all for now, and I've gained a little bit of terror. You don't want terror to reach 100. Bad things usually happen when it hits that point in time. And while I could stick around at the Cock and Magpie for a little bit longer, we might as well shove off and head north. We're also gaining fragments, which, after a certain number of fragments seen right here, will give us another secret. Secrets can be used to boost any one of these statistics based on the officers we have. As of right now, we have absolutely no officers, but it's not really any fault of my own. 
Ooh, we might as well engage in a little bit of uh, anti-piracy actions. Taking a free shot at him. And I do want to remain out of range. Wow. You have a really fast charge up time. But I will gladly take some supplies from you. And we're at... Oh, we're near Demino's Gate. Interesting. Loot and scuttle, and we get a cache of curiosities. She's a vile old vessel, and these seas aren't safe. Take what you can and move on. Link pickings. These pinnaces don't sail far from the hidden harbors, but there's something at the back of the hold. A cache of curiosities, a belt of fabric. Shake out a little and let it glimmer in the light. You find spider silk in London, of course. There are troubles there with sour spider infestation, like anywhere in the Neath. But for a real quality, you need to go east to the Carnate, or to the fang bristling fastness of Savior's rocks. I now have a bolt of spider silk. Also, we're in Demino's Gate. I'm surprised that that's as close as it is. Usually it's much further away. Unfortunately, I have to be busy elsewhere, because we have to go north to Vendabite. Which, thankfully, Vendabite... Uh... Any of those places in the Frozen location, whose name escapes me for now, are all completely, like, uh, stagnant. Those will never change location. Anyway, I think we can uh, drop combat stance. And we found Hunter's Keep. Precisely where I wished to be. Let's go meet with the three ladies again. Hopefully that story resolves much better now that we have a decent heart score. Yeah, this captain is already at a much better state than the previous one. As you all know, how the previous one just couldn't pass those checks to save his life. And I think our fuel and supplies reserve will hold out. Anyway. Hunter's Keep. A quiet isle. A grand old house. A hump of dark rock swathed in mist, like a hundred other undersea islands. But here's a grand house, windows aglow, lawns impossibly green and lush in the false starlight, raked gravel paths. You stand on the docks as the sea nudges the ship's sides, an unexpectedly warm breeze carries the faintest trace of lavender. We could present ourselves to the house, walk in the garden, so we can attempt to spy on it. But actually, I'd rather retcon near the island. Plunging cliffs, soft green lawns are well tucked away in the fold of the grounds. Anything else? The sea's silence. Ships rarely come here. Nothing changes, even the weather. The house is at the heart of the isle. The house and the sisters, but the Admiralty may be happy to know that nothing's changed, at least. And let's walk in the gardens. Now let's present ourselves at the house. They'll have heard your ship come in. Why hide? Knock and enter. A maid with smoldering topaz eyes show you as you into the parlor where three young women wait. A visitor! The youngest cries. The next youngest chuckles. The eldest sighs. Do excuse the indecorum, she says. Visitors are rare. You are very welcome. I am Cynthia. The noisy one is Phobe. The cheerful one is Lucy. You are in a good time for lunch. Will you join us? And we'll have luncheon with Cynthia, the eldest, melancholy, pensive, and occasionally dramatic. Cynthia grasps your arm and whispers to you. Her eyes are wide and blue. Her hair is wild and tangled. Bats might nest in it. It seems to you that you are sitting on a hillside above a wide blue lake, listening to a story of a murder, an axe, a net, blood on scented water. Another chop, Cynthia asks. You've barely touched your food. Here, I'll have the maid wrap something up for you. You can't be hungry. It's not safe to be hungry. And we've gained an extra pair of supplies, gained terror, gained a tail of terror, which, as you know, is very important. And that's all for now. Alright, now that that sneeze is over with. Now, they normally won't be receiving visitors, but I'm going to bring some news with me as long as my hold can handle it. Yes, it can. News? News! Even when the sisters aren't feeling sociable, they can be tempted out of their lair by the smell of new stories. Knock and wait. You ask the sulfur-eyed maid to carry a few hints of your news to the sisters. Oddly enough, she comes back with a message that the headaches are cured, and you're invited to lunch. And we'll have luncheon with Lucy. The middle sister is sunny, restless, and prone to giggles. A daft tale. 
Lucy leans over and whispers to you confidently, a complex story about a butler, a pig, and an inheritance. You don't follow the details of the plot, but somehow the pig ends up in the attic and the butler in the vicar's bed. Candles flicker, dishes enter and leave, and the wind butts gently at the window panes. By the time the palm pudding arrives, you're as cheerful as you've been in months. Ah, my mistake. I had thought that that actually gave you another tale, so I guess I'm going to have to look elsewhere to find the other piece. Because I know you can get a memory of a distant shore there as well, via some other means. Anyway, full speed ahead to the north. Oh, bat swarm. Curses. Aim. Aim. Fire. Good. Now well, they're gone down for now, and the sure amount of supplies we're going to be gaining, because we're going to gather up the corpses into the pot. We'll gain a free supply and another bit of tarot, but that's not a big issue, for we like our unorthodox diet. Those little bones are troublesome, and the flesh is a little gamey, but salt them well enough, and they're quite edible. Now I will pull this away, just because normally you won't be able to see what's going on here, and we'll never really have to look at the officers. I might show you them what they do. Although I actually should show you what the uh, Sly Navigator does. Plus one to my mirror skill. Mm, that's a fog bank. You you do want to avoid them. And I've gained a secret, but I don't feel like boosting my mirror skill at all. We're not exactly stealthy. We're, we're the epitome of gentlemen who eventually will wish to hunt the most dangerous game. Man. So I was asked not to sell souls, but I can't really sell the souls of others, now can I? Or, I can't not sell the souls of others. Anyway, we're in Vandabite. Let's see what this little tomb colonist has to say upon our landing. The trouble with tomb colonists. You brought this decaying emigrant north. Now what? Days of shrooms and roses. A new tomb colonist observes Vandabite, shaking her head. It won't do, she says. It won't do at all. A plan! I had no idea this place would be quite so unprepossessing. Perhaps we're going to liven it up a little. Yet, if only I knew a helpful Z captain, bring ten units of mushroom wine to Vandervite, and perhaps they'll have something for you. Provide what you've promised. The tomb colonists of Vandervite have few pleasures remaining. Their new home is an echoing palace of rare dust. Perhaps you can help a little. Provide wine. Your former passenger waits on the docks. You've brought friends. Thirsty friends. Wine. Provide wine and join the celebration. Your former passenger and their friends would be delighted if you raise a glass with them. And we should most definitely join them. Of which I can't remember what actually happened from this. But why not? A hiatus. You're somewhat dark. Something happened. There are moths. What are these things? What are all of these things? I have a devil bone dice, a tail of terror, lost ten casks of mushroom lime, lost one crew, gained a soothing copper long box, gained five terror, an Atlantic artifact, and two lamentable relics. And now we're on the deck. You can hear the sound of a thousand bandaged dead men make their shuffle and cough. It's as if it's something like the world's most restless concert audience, or the world's most plague ridden cathedral. And let us visit Vendabai, or explore it at least. Here they favor candlelight over gaslight. The shadows are swagged in cloth webs, and the tomb colonists stand still enough to be mistaken for sculpture until they laugh or cough. One building in three seems abandoned. An unorthodox technology. Sweeter scents draw you into a shop which sells candles, liliac, lavender, and honey. You fall into a discussion of their manufacture with the shopkeeper. Yes, she says, proudly displaying her missing arm. We render ourselves to a good end. Oh, don't look like that. Our fats are of a finer quality than any other, and we grow tired of our bodies down here. Disgusting. And now it's time to gather gossip. Along the coast of the undersea, it's remarkably hard to die. The crept and nearly dead who leave London become tomb colonists and settle here in bandaged peace. But they don't give up their ties to home, or their politics. You gather a haul of complex clues, enough to keep your contacts in London interested. And we'll visit the curator. Z-Captain, 
The first curator gives audience. The first curator is responsible for the preservation of the tomb colonies. It has been here much longer than London, like all the oldest tomb colonists. But even tomb colonists dissolve in the end. Its time is close. No more light. The, ob the obsequious steward cautions you. The, curi the curator is terribly afraid of moths. He opens the door, and you step into near darkness. A pair of luminous lamplighter bees buzz in a lacted ivory tube. There is no other source of light. A banded shape, no larger than a child, lies crumpled on a couch. It lifts its head with obvious effort. It takes several seconds for you to distinguish its voice from the soft buzz of the bees. Listen to its whispered request. Z Captain, silk skin, not much left of me. I will go into the Grand Sanatorium. Bring me colors, seven colors, pay well. Ask about the Grand Sanatorium. One hears the name whispered here and there in the arcades of Vandabite. Sure, we'll ask. Oh, Silkskin, you don't want to know. The chuckling becomes a cough. We don't die here below. Not unless we go to Z, so we needed something else, somewhere to end. And I'll accept the commission, for I must leave very, very soon. No more words. It collapses, rustling, back onto the couch. Even the effort of speaking seems to have diminished it a little. The audience is over. As the door opens, it shrinks from the finger of light that reaches across the floor. Outside, the obsequious steward nods. The book? The book? Um, the book? Yes, the book. It hands you a slim, illustrated volume. The curator is old. Old as dust. We will all be grateful if you do it one last favor. And with that, I shall end this episode here in Vandabite. Hope you've all enjoyed watching. This has been BrainBoy20 with Let's Play Sunless Sea, and I am signing off. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like, comment, or subscribe for it upside a great deal, and I hope to see you all next time. Farewell.